Back when it first started in 1986, the network Fox was a huge breath of fresh air for TV viewers. They were largely the counterculture to all the boring by-the-numbers shows that were being made by the big three, NBC, ABC, and CBS. Sadly, as the network grew, they started taking fewer risks, and when they did make something unusual, they would often panic and bail on those shows way too quickly, never giving them the time to find their audience. If there was a show you liked on Fox, there was a high chance that it would mysteriously vanish. Here's five solid Fox shows that they canceled within the first season. Space Above and Beyond With the X-Files being a huge success for Fox, ironically, a show that executives at Fox wanted to cancel in its first season, two of the showrunners, Glenn Morgan and James Wong, put together a unique sci-fi series. Space Above and Beyond was about a special team of Marines in the year 2063 called the Wild Cards. They were fighting a group of aliens called the Chigs that are trying to stop humans from expanding their reach into other sections of the galaxy. While humans are using the most advanced tech we have at the time, it's clear the Chigs are far more advanced, and as such, many episodes show the humans fighting a losing battle. The show premiered on September 24th, 1995. The series was inspired by numerous works of sci-fi, namely Starship Troopers, The Forever War, as well as other non-sci-fi things like the Red Badge of Courage and the TV series Combat. As a way to give the show some additional pizzazz, the space battles were done using new computer technology. They were all done in CG, which was still relatively new at the time, especially for a TV show. I believe the only other sci-fi show to rely this heavily on CG at the time was Babylon 5. The production values on the show were very high, and with the low ratings... Fox decided the show was too expensive to keep on the air. The series lasted for one season with 23 episodes. The last episode aired on June 2, 1996. The series later ran in reruns on the Sci-Fi Channel. IGN listed the show as one of the top 50 sci-fi shows of all time and called it another sci-fi show that went before its time. The show spawned a series of novels as well as comic books. In 2005, the show was released on DVD. The Region 1 version is out of print and is fairly expensive. In 2012, it was released on DVD again as a collector's edition with a documentary, commentaries, and other bonus features. Unfortunately, this is Region 2 locked. However, region-free DVD players are fairly cheap, or you could always just watch the DVDs on your computer. The show is not available for streaming, but the full series is on YouTube. On a side note, the show was where actress Kristen Cloak met Glenn Morgan. The two started dating, and in 1998, a few years after the show ended, the two got married. Morgan has since cast her in many of his projects, like Final Destination, and they're still married today. Harsh Realm Harsh Realm is about a VR game created by the U.S. Army as an alternative way to train soldiers in a variety of scenarios. In the Harsh Realm world... A nuke is set off in New York, and the survivors are living and trying to restore order in this post-apocalyptic environment. However, several states have been taken over by Sergeant Major Omar Santiago, played by Terry O'Quinn. He's surrounded himself with other soldiers and rules Harsh Realm as a dictator. The government orders Lieutenant Hobbs to go into the game and stop Santiago so they can take over Harsh Realm again. There's a variety of reasons they can't just unplug the thing which I won't go into as to not spoil it for anyone who wants to watch. The show was created by Chris Carter, who also created The X-Files. As a way to try to get some audience crossover, the pilot had Gillian Anderson as the narrator for the Harsh Realm training video, and Lance Henriksen from Carter's other show, Millennium, in a cameo. With the themes of VR and alternate reality gaming, the show was very ahead of its time. The series premiered on October 8, 1999, while the network gave Carter a lot of freedom with the show, they panicked because of the violence. They thought the pilot had too much violence for the 8 p.m. time slot and asked him to tone it down. The problem was, a large part of what would sell the series was showing how brutal and lawless society was in Harsh Realm. Trying to make it more kid-friendly would only lessen its appeal to adults. Beyond that, the show was a victim of bad timing. When the show was greenlit, Doug Herzog was the president of Fox. After the show premiered, he was in the process of leaving and would be replaced by Gail Berman. As what often happens in a studio regime change, new shows or shows in development from the previous administration get the short end of the stick. 
Harsh Realm was canceled after three episodes on October 22nd, 1999. It was killed so quickly, Samantha Mathis, who played Sophie Green, didn't even know the show aired. The show was passed off to FX, Fox's cable channel, who aired all nine of the episodes starting April 14th, 2000. There was a 10th episode written for the season finale, but it was never produced. The show is released on DVD and includes all nine episodes. The show is not available for streaming, but the whole series is on YouTube. Strange Luck Strange Luck is about Chance Harper, the sole survivor of a plane crash when he was a child. Now an adult, he's a photographer with a very unusual gift. He always seems to be at the wrong place at the right time. For example, he says if he goes to a restaurant, someone chokes. If he goes to the bank, it gets robbed. The show was created by Carl Schaefer, a TV producer and writer who created shows like Erie, Indiana and Z Nation. The series premiered on September 15, 1995. The show revolved around Harper, who would often stumble into bad situations and would survive them due to his strange luck. The show starred D.B. Sweeney and Pamela Gidley. Sweeney had just played Terry Fitzgerald in 1997's Spawn. Sadly, the show just never found its audience and was canceled due to low ratings. The show lasted for one season with 17 episodes. The final one aired on February 23, 1996. The series was later picked up by the Sci-Fi Channel. The show is not available for streaming and it's not on DVD. It is on YouTube, but it was uploaded back when YouTube had a time restriction, so the episodes are in nine-minute chunks. On a personal note, I loved the show and was playing a Forgotten Realms D&D campaign at the time. I had an elf that was a member of the Harpers, then I named Chance. Kindred. Kindred the Embraced is based on the role-playing game Vampire the Masquerade from White Wolf. The show is produced by John Leakley Productions and, of all things, Spelling TV, who was making shows like 90210 and Melrose Place at the time. The show premiered on April 2, 1996. When the show began, it focused on SFPD Frank Kahonik, played by C. Thomas Howell. He's investigating a mobster, Julian, who he discovers is not a mobster, but is really a vampire. As the show progressed, it shifted focus away from the detective and more into the inner workings of the vampires. He also focused on Julian developing feelings for a human reporter named Caitlin, played by a then-unknown Kelly Rutherford. The show incorporated many of the lavish theatrics of the role-playing game, which was often used for live-action role-playing. Critics liked the show, but many were more interested in the vampires than the humans, which is why the show shifted focus. Entertainment Weekly called it The Godfather Soaked in Blood, which brought back memories of 1992's Innocent Blood. The show lasted for one season with eight episodes. For some reason, Fox skipped episode three, and it never aired. So audiences in the initial run only got seven episodes. The last episode aired on May 8th, 1996. There were two more episodes planned, but with the show underperforming, those plans were scrapped and the story has no resolution. The show was released on DVD with all eight episodes in 2001. This includes episode three. It was re-released in 2012 in a box set that included the Book of Nod role-playing game. The show is not available for streaming, but all the episodes are on YouTube. Profit. Profit is about Jim Profit, a newly promoted executive at a company called Grayson & Grayson. Profit then uses extortion, blackmail, and just about every other dirty trick to succeed, all the while breaking the fourth wall to explain his motives to the audience. Even though Profit lives in a huge luxury penthouse, he sleeps naked every night on a cardboard box. Later in the series, we find out why he does this, and why he's doing such awful things at G&G. Profit aired on April 8, 1996. Fox heavily promoted the series, but quickly lost faith in it when the ratings came in. Critics loved it, but audiences at the time weren't ready for this sort of TV, leading many to say that it was just too far ahead of its time. This was years before shows like The Sopranos and Breaking Bad, shows that focused on anti-heroes, who often committed some heinous crimes to further their own goals. The show's lead-in was the massively popular Melrose Place, but each week it was on, it lost more and more of that audience. Apparently viewers were calling Fox affiliates to complain about the show, calling Jim Prophet Satan in a suit, which really 
was kind of the point. He was not a good guy, but the audience couldn't see beyond that. Seeing how uncomfortable the show made audiences, they canceled the series after four episodes. Critics adored the show, calling it refreshingly cruel, the most exciting new show of the year. Entertainment Weekly listed it as number eight on their best new shows of 1996. TV Guide put it as number four on the 60 shows canceled too soon list. The final four episodes remained unseen for years in the U.S. until the cable channel Trio picked it up in 2002 and ran all eight episodes. The show was released on DVD in 2005, but it's now out of print and expensive. The show isn't available for streaming, but it is on YouTube. And that's another five shows. The list of series that Fox canceled without giving them a chance is pretty large. So this is another topic I'm sure I'll be coming back to from time to time. That's all for this week. I'll see you next time. Stay tuned. Do you have a gun? See my pants?